Why hello there and welcome to a new video and today I'm not in the gym. Yeah, well, I hope you have noticed that. Um, so I am doing a slightly different video to my usual upbeat kind of YouTube video in the gym where I'm pumping iron. This one is part two of my story. If you have not watched part one of my story, go check it out. I'll put the link above or you can just find it in my vlogs. Um, and that is all about my personal history. And part two today is all about something that I know everyone has been thinking about, asking about, accusing me of. And so I decided I'm gonna put it all on the table tell you every single aspect of my journey with this regard and I know everyone is gonna be interested. So get down, sit down, get comfortable because today we are talking about steroids. So this is my personal story, my experiences. Please note that at no point do I condone the use of steroids or recommend the use of steroids. It is a very personal journey and a very personal decision and if you want to know more about the health and side effects of steroids please go check out someone like Jeff Nippard who is a lifetime natural um, obviously I am not a lot lifetime natural hence I'm talking about steroids um, but this is my personal joint journey and I want everyone to be open and aware of the side effects of steroids, both negative and positive. Don't just do it because you want to look good, bro. You know, if you're you are looking at getting your IFBB Pro card or something like that, <laughs> even then, it is it is not something that I would highly recommend, and I wouldn't recommend you just jumping into it and hoping for the best because you know, yo, bro, I want to get big. Uh, so. I'm going to be going through my entire journey from 2014, which is when I started, to today. Uh, and I'm going to lay it all out on the table, all my side effects, both big, uh, positive and negative, and get comfortable because this is a very, very long story. I have got Leonardo with me to keep me company, uh, though I am a Donatella fan through and through. Uh, so I'm going to be sipping on my coffee and talking to you and I hope you take it all on board. Um, and uh, if you, you're one of those judgmental arseholes, click off now because I am being completely open and honest with you and if you still don't believe me, well, fuck you. So. I started my journey in 2014, so I'm going to be referring to a whole lot of pictures on my computer so to jog back memories, etc, etc, and I'll put those pictures on the screen as I go so you get a full understanding of exactly my journey, how my body transformed with what I took. So I started in 2014, um, I was recovering from cancer, severely underweight, and I weighed 38 kilograms, and that is, is something that I think needs to be taken into consideration because early on when I first got accused of taking steroids before I actually did, long time before I actually did, people would go, well, you've put on so much muscle mass. And the answer is I did not put on so much muscle mass. I put on weight, okay, not quite the same thing, that included fat, fat tissue, muscle memory recovery, etc., etc. And so when I put on a lot of weight, I was simply getting back to a normal, healthy body weight in the process of recovering from cancer. So I was underweight to begin with. So please take that into consideration. So I started competing halfway through 2014. I started lifting weights in January for shits and giggles. I did purely body weight um, and did not know what I was doing or anything. So for my first show in 2014, um, I did nada in June. Uh, I showed up on the day with a handmade bikini, which I sewed myself with the wrong tan on. Didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Someone had to help me get a proper tan. Uh, and I was really, really skinny, but I had abs because the first kind of training that I did was calisthenics. My abs developed really, really quickly. 
my abs actually counted against me in the long run when I started moving up into figure and bumped me straight into women's physique because I had such dominant abs. But so I weighed, let's say 45 kilograms, round about there. Um, I didn't actively weigh myself at this point in time. Skinny, no boobs, no implants, nothing. Just a little girl who d found the world of bodybuilding. And for my first show, I actually came third. And I think that was kind of like the snowball effect of, hey, I'm actually good at something because my entire life, I was always kind of very shy, very introverted, typical kind of bodybuilder journey picked on at school, very, you know, like loner, nerdy. Uh, and so when I found bodybuilding, I think that aspect of finding something that I enjoyed and I was good at uh, kind of snowballed me further into the field. So from there, I did Rossi in September. At Rossi, I didn't place at at all. So I thought I looked quite decent here and a lot of people will say, well, you look good enough here. Why did you keep on getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Um, but for me, I think I enjoyed the training more than anything else. Uh, and with Rossi, of course, I didn't place and that kind of just made me even more passionate about competing. Um, and then I moved on to Body Beautiful where I won. Uh, that was probably one of the biggest lineups of my bodybuilding career they were like 35 other girls um and the one thing to note is when you're in bikini everyone's quite similar in physique so it comes down to your stage presence a lot of the time not necessarily how you look because a lot of the bikini girls look very 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 similar and the, the marginal differences between them um can be personified by your stage appearance, by your posing, how you move. And that was something that I was really, really good at. Um, I did nothing for these competitions because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. No water drop. I didn't dial in. I just showed up. 2015 is where I made my kind of my name for myself in South Africa. Obviously, not, not the the rest of the world but a lot of people in the bodybuilding sphere started to notice me and that was because i did 15 shows in 2015 the benefits of again being completely natural and not having to dial in for a show or using any kind of directics or anything is that you can go from show to show to show to show to show and that's exactly what i did i did multiple shows um and my I still developed as I went along, put on a little bit more muscle mass. Because I wasn't having to dial in and restrict my calories, I was actually able to grow through 2015. And this is where people started accusing me of taking gear. Still, I maintained completely natural. Um, and there wasn't even a thought of taking anything at this point in time. I was just like enjoying the process. I did relatively well, I think. I don't know how many times I won, but I usually placed podium throughout that year. You can see, like, a lot of people will go, oh, you're already on steroids here because of my abs. And I had really, really defined abs. Uh, and that's something, even if you look in 2014, I had fucking popping abs. And they just got bigger and harder and more defined the more I trained. Um... And you can see in my muscle development here, I won Napa Nationals, ladies figure. You can see my legs are quite small still. I've got really defined biceps no matter what um, because, I've, because I've got such a high insertion point. So that is something that, again, people will go, oh, you must be on steroids because, you know, I've got popping biceps. But that is purely genetic. So my abs and my biceps purely insertions. You can see kind of a little quad definition here. Um, again, and I was winning national titles, completely natural, not dialing in for a show. Um, you know, I was at the most I did towards the end of the year, I started delving into diuretic protocols as in I used water free, which is essentially dandelion root and vitamin C. Uh, it was something that I just bought off the counter from the pharmacy and I started using that for a few days out from comp 
you know, it's kind of like, okay, well, people were talking about diuretics, so I assumed that's what they meant. I remember going for a workout training program uh, session with another girl, and she asked me, she's like, no, what, uh, what aminos do you take? And I was like, oh, I love the pineapple one. And she replies and she's like, no, honey, that's not what I'm talking about. And I was just like, oh, okay, I don't, I don't know what you mean. And I think because I was so prominent within the bodybuilding sphere, people just assumed that either A, I was on stuff or B, that I knew what the fuck I was doing, but I, I didn't. You know, I was still making my own bikinis, doing my own posing, doing my own diet, doing my own training. I had no coach. I had no one kind of steering me in the right direction. It was just me on my own. Um, and at that point, I was also getting quite a bit stronger. So you can see here, I was deadlifting 140 kilograms for reps. And this is round about me weighing 45 kilograms at this point in time. So, I mean, that's, that's three times body weight, completely natural. Uh, and you can see here, I'm squatting 110 kilograms. Again, completely natural, not on anything. And in some regards, you know, like I do wish I had continued completely natural because I wasn't aware of my strength at that point in time. I wasn't kind of like interested in powerlifting, didn't know anything about powerlifting. Um, and so me lifting those numbers, you know, two and a half times body weight squat, three times body weight deadlift, completely natural. If someone had said, hey, yo, bro, you know, those are actually fucking good numbers. You should look at powerlifting. Uh, you know, maybe maybe my direction would have steered away from body. In 2016 is when the shift happened. So 2016, you can still see, this is me completely natural. Um, I try doing figure. You can see here, I'm starting to get more leg definition. Again, still completely natural. Um, my classic ab shot, a little bit of vascularity going on there, also completely natural. Again, people are really gonna start assuming, well, they already did in 2015, start accusing me of, yeah. Um, I went on and did provincials and in provincials there was no one else on stage it was just me and i came first uh, surprise surprise and made it through to uh, nationals now nationals was four weeks or, or something like that after provincials and a friend of mine was obviously she had she was preparing for nationals as well same division as me and she was like are you taking anything i was like no but you know I'm thinking of taking something because I'm really wanting to be more serious about it and I want to try and get my pro card. And that's when I started digging into taking gear. So four weeks dialing in on taking Anavar, I was literally taking five milligrams of Anavar a day. And let's be real here, was I actually taking Anavar? Who fucking knows? I was probably taking T-Bowl or D-Bowl or, you know, something that is cheaper because Anavar is one of the more expensive things. Um, but, you know, four weeks, I don't know if I noticed much of a difference. Uh, and she also recommended, so I was also taking injectable Rivazine, which is clean and... Mm, I think it's T3. Uh, yeah. No, sorry. Oh, yeah. Yehembe. Someone had to tell me. Okay, so it was, it's a concoction of Kling and Yehembe. Uh, and she said, you know, it's localized. Uh, so I was like, oh, you know, like I, I've got this little fat on my lower bum. Can we inject there? So for those four weeks leading up to the competition, I was injecting Yehembe. I don't know the dosages. Um, to be honest, I, I really don't. But you can see at that point, even my legs are a little bit harder, you know, just four weeks and my legs are starting to harden up a little bit more. Um, and my abs are a little bit harder. You probably can't see in this photo, but definitely a little bit of crispness that I hadn't had before, but predominantly in my legs. And that was after just four weeks of Anavar. Stopped everything. Um, because 
I wasn't going to do anything in the off season. I just wanted to bulk. Um, and there was, I didn't see the point in taking anything in my off season. I was just like, okay, well, you know, what's done is done. And because I was only on for four weeks, I don't think I noticed any other side effects, especially only five milligrams of Anavar and a little bit of clean, um, would not have done noticeable damage or any form of noticeable transformation at that point in, in time. And, you know, like five milligrams of Anavar, uh, you know, or Tebow or Devo or whatever I was taking, probably wouldn't have been enough. What I will say though is, a funny story is the girl that I was competing with, so the one who helped me with the Anavar and the Riverzine, she was also taking growth hormone. And she was like, no, you need to take growth hormone. It is, you know, that's what you have to do. And I was like, listen, you know, bro, I don't know much, but I know that um, I've had cancer and that call can, if you have even like a little bit of cancer, it will make it grow. So I was like, no, I'm not going to even go down growth hormone route. And I never have. Um, and uh, so she took the growth hormone and she'd been taking it for a while. I don't know how long she was taking. I don't know the dosage, but it was obviously legit uh, growth hormone because visually she didn't change like I did not see any muscular development um, but her feet grew two sizes two sizes so she had to throw out all her shoes and she said to me like listen what size feet are you because my feet have grown two sizes so you're welcome to all my feet and I scored some Doc Martens and a few other things uh, because her feet had literally literally grown uh, within that time frame so after nationals and i won nationals and i won overall i was i was like dead set now i was like okay so i won nationals i won overall title both in bikini when i was still natural and and taking a little bit of animal in 2016. so i was more determined than ever to to keep on going down this path. I was like, no, I can get my fucking pro card. I am determined. So in 2017 was my first dedicated off season. I didn't take anything in my off season, um, but from 16 weeks out, I started my second cycle, could we say. At that point in time, I wasn't interested in taking anything in my off season because I was like, no, the only thing I need to do is protect the muscle mass when I dial in. So, uh, increase my anavar from five milligrams a day to 10 milligrams a day. And I, I took the injectable riverzine from six weeks out. Again, I can't remember the dosage. Um, and, and again, my friend was helping me. She just suggested taking it from six weeks out. She said it wasn't necessary to do any longer than that. And this is when, like, I can definitely notice legs starting developing way more. Um, you know, like the separation started coming through. So I obviously had that separation, um, but the hardening, the crisping, the muscle development from being on Anavar for 16 weeks because I was on Anavar for 16 weeks, you know, it's it shows, you know, that's that's four months. And you can see the difference between nationals, where I have been on Anavar for four weeks as opposed to being it on for 16 weeks. You can see I'm bigger, um, maybe even, maybe even a little fuller, but I, I don't think I was as dry then. You, I mean, I definitely don't look as dry as I was in at nationals and the, the, the sheen and gloss on me doesn't help the situation. Um, and what I can notice note is so obviously the first side effects of taking steroids took effect. Number one being my voice. So for a couple of weeks, I had this really crackly voice, but because no one told me the side effects before, you know, like no one guided me. Um, I, I was like nonchalant about this crappy voice. I didn't didn't think anything of it. Um, and then my voice dropped and I now cannot reach high pitches at all. So this is the highest I can go. I can't get higher than this. Uh, <laughs> my husband can get higher than me. 
Uh, so this is the highest, that, that's the highest my voice goes now. And essentially what I can describe it as kind of like a boy going through puberty where he gets that crackly voice for a few weeks and then his voice drops. But of course men can still reach the high pitches, I think. I don't know. Um, but yes, so my voice definitely dropped. Um, another side effect was, so again, being completely transparent, I had no libido beforehand. So like, you know, there was no sex life for me no orgasms none of that because i was not interested in that sort of thing and then of course going on to a little bit of a test-based substance for the first time in my life i had a libido and i was like oh this is why people enjoy sex you know like i should probably bleep out these words but essentially that was a significant side effect that i was very aware of i was like holy shit this is what that's all about um so I also noticed an increase in energy levels, like I could go and I could go and I could go and you know, you're on like a thousand calories, but because you're taking clean, you're just like fucking like energy levels through the fucking roof, you know, you can't have a cough, but you're still like pumping and going and going and going and the clean just kind of masks the fact that you're running on such a deficit and you know, you're actually exhausted and all these things and my nutrition at this point still wasn't amazing um i cut on protein and fruit um i probably wasn't eating enough protein um no i probably was eating enough protein at that point um but definitely definitely i noticed the libido i noticed the voice um uh, yeah so those were the two biggest side effects of me taking the testosterone and of course adding a little bit of muscle mass. Now, because I was dialing in, I was not, I did not take gear to get stronger. And because I was in a deficit, it's not like I could noticeably mark an, an increase in strength. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't deadlifting at the stage because everyone said that deadlifting thickens your waist. Um, I wasn't squatting because everyone said squatting thickens your waist. So I wasn't doing any strength movements besides a leg press and even my leg press, I never did it for strength numbers. My rep ranges was like 10 to 20. So at no point did I notice an increase in strength on the gear. So. If there was an increase in strength, I wasn't aware of it, but of course I was in a deficit diet um, and I wasn't taking note of what I was lifting, et cetera, et cetera. And I wasn't obviously taking gear for strength purposes. So that was 2017 and that was my first delve into the deep sides. I came second at the Arnold's um, and to this lovely lady so as you can see she's a lot bigger than me her triceps are fucking popping her shoulders are fucking popping you know like so good on her for taking that win uh, she didn't get her pro card though so i don't know why they didn't hand out a pro card so then 2018 came around and 2018 was the first time i was like i am going to take something in my off season uh so i took Anavar in my off season to help me build uh, and that is when I started noticing the puffy puffy face uh, so in my off season I started getting a, a, like this moon face uh, and I think that was because of the Anavar or the D bowl or the T bowl or whatever the fuck was actually what I was actually taking and that's a, the thing that you have to be aware of when you're dealing with underground pharmaceuticals is you don't actually know if you're legitimately taking what they say you're taking um but i definitely noticed you know obviously i'm a lot more watery so the chances are it's probably d bowl um but my face got rounder and rounder and my jawline i think this is when i first noticed my jawline so um, this was also the, the year I think I probably got the hardest. Um, out of all the years, I got the hardest. I got the leanest that I've probably ever been. I had leg vein for fucking days. Um, and this is when I, so I bulked on Anavar and then for six weeks, I took Primo, uh, leading up to the show. Uh, and this is probably... 
when I noticed my face the most. Like, my face got bulky. Like, the jawline, like, what the fuck is going on there? So, I, you know, like, people will say, oh, your, your jawline is very square now. And I'm like, no, dude, like, I've always had a fucking square jawline. You know, even before I started weightlifting, before I started bodybuilding, should I say, I had a fucking square jawline. So you can see here, like, dead on straight, I've got a fucking jawline on me. So it's not like I suddenly grew a fucking jawline, but I can definitely say my face distorted a little bit with the gear usage. Um, and I hated the way I looked in 2018. I've really started getting very, very uncomfortable with the way my face was developing. And because you're submerged in the bodybuilding atmosphere, I don't think you see yourself the same way and you're willing to do a lot more because you're, you're so singularly focused on the one thing. And for me, that was trying to get my pro card. And so my boundaries, kept on changing from, you know, I'll never take steroids to I'm taking steroids to from I'll never take more than this amount to I'm taking Primo because, you know, I was like, a, I was never taking injectable steroids and now I'm taking Primo. And, and so your, your boundaries just move and move and move. And, you know, the one thing I would say was like, you know, like, oh, I'll never be one of those people who, if their face starts changing and, you know, their hair starts thinning that, you know, I'll, it's willing, I'm willing to do what it takes. And, you know, I went there and I did that. And like, I, I hated the way my face looked by the end of 2018. Um, and I came second, uh, I did my uh, Two Bros Pro show in, in the UK, but it's probably one of my best condition shows. I would say arguably almost better than 2019, which is when I got my pro card. Uh, and, and in terms of what I took for how I looked, I would say proof is in less is more. You don't need to be taking a shitload to get really good results. If you stick to your fucking diet and do what you're supposed to do, uh, you will get fantastic results and you don't need to take a shitload. But even on the dosages that I was taking, my face started changing. And it, when I was off season, the puffiness in my face and then my nose looked like it was getting bigger. It, it, but it wasn't. It was just the water retention in my nose. So there were a lot of starting to... The negative side effects of the steroids started to become more prominent. Um, and, you know, I started growing some facial hair, so I had to start shaving. Let's be completely honest here. So those were some of the things that I really noticed in 2018. Uh, so I bulked with some gear for a little, with Anabar for a bit, and I cut with Primo. And at that stage, I then switched to just oral Anabar for the last four weeks. Um, and everyone was like, no, you have to build up the amount that you take. So the, sorry, the oral clean. So I would take a little bit, a little bit more each week. And the one thing that I remember with the clean was uh, the first two days that I took clean, I got such severe cramps. Um, I, th I was taking, I was taking 10 MCGs um, in the morning. And the first two hours, I was shaking like fucking crazy. Uh, and then I got stuck on a flight of stairs because both my quads cramped up. And then I tried to drive and I couldn't change the clutch control because my quads are cramping up again. And clean is not healthy. And I would not recommend clean at all, looking back at it. But it was one of those, when you're in the moment, you do whatever the fuck it takes. Um... And so, Annabelle for bulking, Primo for cutting, Clean for cutting, and to protect the muscle mass as well. And this, I'd say, is absolutely my best condition. Um, but I came second, and then I was like all fucking in, you know. So, 2019 is the year that I went balls to the fucking wall. And, you know, was it worth it? I got my pro card, but I look, I look at the condition that I had and, and compare it to 2018 and I'm like, you know what? I don't think 
I don't think it was worth it. I don't think it was worth it. Uh, my condition was pretty much the same as 2018. Um, this year I took Aldactone, Darwin with that. Um, you know, I took Clean, I took Primo and Anavar at the same time. You know, I was willing to do whatever the fuck it took. Uh, my hair broke. Um, so I bleached my hair. As you can see, I'm no longer a blonde, but here I'm a blonde. My hair snapped. So you can see like here's where my hair is and then I put in extensions because my hair literally snapped. Uh, it could have been bleach, you know, but my hair was definitely damaged at this point in time and that was purely from the gear. Um, I got my pro card in June and then I stopped. So you can see genetics does play a part in my transformation. I mean, this is me at three years old. Uh -huh, I'm completely natural there, you know, if you don't believe me. Uh, <laughs> so at three years old, I had fucking shoulder caps and uh, fucking glutes and a quad separation. And, you know, like I was fucking a meaty child there at three years old. So genetics definitely took a, uh, took a play took a part in my transformation but obviously the gear was significant if you compare 2016 pre-gear um me completely natural compared to where i am taking gear yeah i put on some muscle mass but that's also two years of progress no it's um it's three years yeah, from, from 2016, halfway through 2016, and I took like November 2016, so that's 2017, 2018, yeah, so almost three years of me taking gear to put on the amount of muscle mass that I took on. So on in 2016, I weighed in on stage at 49 kilograms uh, for nationals, for provincials and that's where I was completely natural. 2019 I weighed in at 59 kilograms on stage so in three years I put on 10 kilograms of muscle mass to and and that would be legitimate muscle mass because obviously both uh, competitions I was the leanest I could possibly be um, and obviously holding as little fat as possible so that is probably the truest representation of how much muscle mass I put on in three years and so 10 kilograms from 49 kilograms to 59 kilograms um, obviously resulting in my pro card in 2019. 2019 was also the year that I got married and did my I did a powerlifting comp for um, fun but I was already off everything um, and planning on what I was going to do next. Uh, as you can see, I'm still really puffy. I was bulking at the time, but I was doing it completely natural. Like I felt like my body needed a change. My hair definitely needed a change. Uh, uh, you know, just everything needed a rest after pushing so fucking hard for, to, for my pro card in 2019. So I was off everything, but Two things to take into consideration is the fact that women tend to, now this is, I've heard this from two places, Seeker Strength and Derek More Place More Dates have stated that women tend to retain their muscle mass and their strength after they start the cycle. So if you maintain your training regime and your eating regime um, and you are still dedicated after you stop uh, the gear you tend to retain all of that and I can definitely say for sure that that is what happened with me I definitely I you know like again I wasn't training for strength when I was doing bodybuilding so I can't say if my strength massively increased I was never taking gear for strength purposes um, obviously I was just trying to get on muscle mass but 2019 I did a powerlifting comp and I didn't prep for it I didn't take gear I didn't do anything I just kind of showed up hadn't water dropped hadn't done anything to kind of make weight I just kind of you know showed up and for shits and giggles did it uh, and did extremely well 
uh, won my weight class and came second overall and I was like second in Africa. So whether that was the gear, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people say it is the gear, but the proof is, the fact is, before I started gear at 45 kilograms, I was already deadlifting three times my body weight. So yeah, I could have definitely put on some strength whilst I was doing bodybuilding, and I don't deny that for a second. What I would say is, you know, if a woman takes gear and then comes off, um, you know, all sports, they have a four year ban and then, you know, you get popped and then you come back after four years. So is that fair for females then? Because if females retain their muscle mass and their strength or after they come off, um, is it allowed? But it, sh it is allowed because they, that's what they do in all sports. Uh, and that's kind of how I felt with everything in 2019 and I stayed off everything. Okay. And a couple things that I will note is, so one thing I was so happy about was the fact that my face started slimming down again. Um, even though for CrossFit, I was actually putting on weight, I was trying to intentionally not be as lean. So I was putting on weight, uh, my face was still slimming down. So I was essentially bulking, but my face was changing. Uh, and I, I, I just look at these photos and I see how much thinner my face actually is than where it was at the peak of my bodybuilding. Like, um, it's, it's not like, you know, I've done any fucking facial surgeries uh, or anything like that, but my face noticeably changed um, after 2019. You know, like, it slimmed down so much. Uh, and because I was... I was one of those people who was like, no, if I'm going to do a sport that, that doesn't allow any form of, of gear, I'm going to do it that way. And so I was resolved. Few things that I noticed was they say that there is kind of like this period after you stop gear where you're actually stronger. And this is according to Seeker, where you actually have this like golden strength period where you're off the gear, but you're actually stronger than you might have been even on the gear. And I can definitely say when I started the CrossFit, I could fucking go and go and go and go and go. And I mean, it didn't last very long, but for the first month or two of me delving into CrossFit, I was a fucking machine and I was completely natural, but I could fucking go. Um, and that was me probably also eating substantially more than I'd ever eaten for power, uh, for bodybuilding purposes. You know, I was, I was trying to be more functional. So I was putting on calories, putting on body fat to be as optimal for CrossFit as possible. Um, and obviously doing it completely natural. <sighs> okay. So we're getting to the end of the story. So from 2019, I was completely natural. So whilst I competed in, in CrossFit, I uh, didn't take anything. And I think this is, this is why I got so frustrated with CrossFit in the end is because, because I truly believe there is no way that someone can be an elite level CrossFit athlete and be completely natural. And I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this. Um, but I was doing it legitimate and I was training for eight hours a day, five days a week. Um, and like literally I was breaking. Um, and I'll go into, I'll do a full CrossFit story at some point about, about all the ins and outs, but I could not recover. And in the end, that's why I stopped CrossFit is because no matter how hard I pushed, I could not recover and I ended up with injury after injury after injury and and so I was like no fuck it why am I doing this I was crying every single day no matter how hard I pushed my body was against me and I just could not recover so I mean, you know people say well will you go on steroids again I'm like no I like my face too much you know <laughs> as, as, as narcissistic as that may sound you know like I did I fucking hated the way I looked facially when I was on stuff. And so that's probably one of my biggest deterrents. Um, 
as to why I probably would never go back onto a serious cycle and the truth is I don't think it's worth it. Unless I was going to compete in bodybuilding again, I do not see the point in harming myself um, and all the negative side effects that come with taking steroids. Uh, so what am I doing now? And th that's the thing, everyone's now obviously accusing me of taking steroids again because I'm pu publicizing a lot on, on social media. Uh, and, and I've lost a lot of the body fat that I was holding and maintaining for CrossFit, so I've gotten a lot leaner. So now that I stopped the CrossFit and I'm just doing what I want to do and, and you know, like I'm no longer focused on competing and if I did compete, whether I am natural or not, I would only do something that was like a powerlifting comp that did not require drug testing because in my personal opinion now looking back i do believe that women retain most of their muscle mass if not all of their muscle mass and their strength uh after stopping gear and so i am essentially stronger than someone who has been lifetime natural and i do i don't think i would ever do a competition where I would be, have to be natural, if that makes sense, against people who are actually natural. But I'm also of the opinion that it's such a hypocritical thing these days because any top elite level athlete, I 100% believe, is on steroids. Uh, there is too much money, there is too much image uh, involved for them to not take something, even though everyone denies it. Or at least not to deny it, but you know, they don't speak about it. And I respect someone a lot more who just doesn't speak about it than goes outwardly and denies that they've ever taken steroids when they have clearly taken steroids. <laughs> so that is my personal opinion is I probably will never compete in something that requires testing. And so what am I doing now? So now I'm looking at um, HRT. Uh, because that was the biggest, biggest thing for me when I started taking gear that I loved was having a libido and, and I don't have one when I'm off everything. Uh, so with CrossFit and everything going on, I was just like fucking nun mode. Uh, and I, and I missed that. And of course, if your testosterone is really, really low naturally, uh, you know, you're more susceptible to osteoporosis and I lost a lot of things that they don't speak about with women is the fact that if you have low testosterone there are, are negative side effects and another thing I'd like to mention is you know when I was in bodybuilding and taking something I was extremely um I was very very confident and obviously the testosterone will boost your testosterone, uh, your confidence levels and make you more self-assured because I am a very timid, introverted person by nature. Uh, and being off everything, I, I did become a lot more timid and I didn't believe in myself. Uh, and that was a big aspect with the CrossFit as well is that I, I didn't have that ferocity that I did have towards the end of bodybuilding is like, I didn't believe in myself. I didn't have that <laughs> fighting confidence that uh, testosterone may have given me. I, I cried after so many CrossFit competitions because I just didn't have that confidence. I didn't believe in myself. Uh, and, and that's where that testosterone kind of like, uh, you know, like fight, go kind of gives you. And, and that was another kind of mental thing that I did pay, make note of is the fact that being natural, I'm not, I'm not that kind of person. I'm not dominant. Uh, I'm not kind of like, Rah! I'm very, very quiet, very introverted, very shy. Uh, and I cry a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah. And then I, you know, the truth is like recovery is a big aspect for me now these days. So I'm looking at peptides. 
and I'm going to always be completely open and honest about my process and what I'm doing and I would love some positive feedback if you're going to be the asshole that says oh what about the fucking trend sandwiches please fuck off because train is not something you should ever fuck with as a female and well you should probably never fuck with it at all male or female because it's so fucking toxic and dangerous for you and another thing i will definitely say is more is not more uh, as proof from 2018 to 2019 is that you do not need to take everything to get results if your diet is on tact, if you're training as hard as you possibly can, and if you are doing everything you possibly can, you do not need to be taking these massive fucking dosages that will harm you. Um, but also investigate everything. Don't be stupid. Don't just take everything because you want to look like, um, you know, top, some top bodybuilder because I can guarantee you if you're not willing to put in the work and the effort, it's a lot of risk to to get very little reward so be smart about what you do and i hope this opens a few eyes into the world of steroids and everything that can it everything both positive and negative that it does to you